Hey guys, it's Magaz here, connecting you to Airsoft. Welcome back to the Pants Party. If it isn't welcome back, go ahead, hit that subscribe button so that next time I see you and say welcome back, I don't look really stupid welcoming you back when you, you haven't even been here yet. Before we get underway, I'd like to give a big shout out to our current Patreon supporter, Henry Field. Support through patreon.com slash cbmpc really helps with the creation of these videos. In this episode of the Pants Party, we are going to be taking a look at some top tier pantaloons. If, like me, you are really into fashion, camouflage, and tactical clothing, you are probably at some point in your airsoft career going to want some really cool pantaloons that nobody else has. Maybe even a one-off pair of G3 trousers in that weird camo pattern from that one movie or that one game. There are only a few places you can go to to affordably make those dreams come true. The most famous of those, and arguably the place with the best reputation, is Kermaz Gear. Kermaz Gear is a small custom gear company run by Roman Kermaz out of Ukraine. Roman makes custom clothing and gear ranging from G3 trousers and U-backs up to plate carriers and mini maps. To order, you have to join a group on Facebook called Replica Lindenhorf Tactic and contact him through there. The process is pretty streamlined. You give him all the details of what you want, pay and wait. As it's a small business with a lot of demand, production and delivery times vary massively. On average, you're looking at up to three months from the point you confirm and pay to it arriving on your doorstep. Let's take a look at the product itself. In this video, we are taking a look at a pair of G3 trousers, in this case, 5.5 and Tondruk Flectorn. A little disclaimer before we go any further, as these are made to order and available in an untold amount of variations in regards to fabric camouflage pattern and custom modifications, whether that be the addition or removal of certain features, it goes without saying that if you order a pair, they may be completely different fabric. So use this as a reference guide only, and not a definitive, this is what I expect to receive. The trousers I have are a non-ripstop drill cotton in 5.5 Flectoin with olive green stretch panels. The panels themselves are a very strange fabric. I'm not sure what it is, but it does not feel anything like the cry stretch fabric nor any of the clones. It has a sort of rough texture. The fabric the trousers are made from does feel very close in weight and texture to a pair of issue Flectoin trousers, so you can use that for a comparison. As with all of the clones we've looked at so far, these are as close to an identical copy of a pair of Cry G3s as you can get. They have all the features we have come to expect, starting from the top. The waistband is nice and high and has some padding to the rear. It features six belt loops. The front two have hoops for the addition of a carabiner for dangling your gloves or other fun stuff from. These two loops are in a slightly different place than the Cry's and all the other clones as are the pockets. They seem to be further away from the center of the pants and closer to the edge. Not a deal breaker, and I don't believe every pair will be like this. That being said, I only have this single pair to make an assessment from. As with standard G3s, the waist closure is large and uses Velcro. The stitching on the loop Velcro is better than the stitching on my legit cries. You can adjust the size of the waistband with the Velcro cinches at the rear. Unlike the actual cry cinches, these have holes in and are less rubbery and more plasticky. We have a YKK zipper on the fly and the Kermaz label is hidden just behind it. The hand wire pockets are super simple and do the job you would expect. Just below them is the accessory pocket. These lead down into the cargo pocket which are bellowed and secured by a Velcro flap. Internally, they have an elastic random crap retainer that is interestingly lower than the cry and the clones in position. The upper thigh pocket is slightly curvier in shape on the bottom side than the cry pocket and hides the knee pad height adjustment cord inside. Below this pocket is the knee pad pocket and stretch fabric. The knee pad pocket is identical in size to the cry and accepts all of your favorite knee pad inserts. The flap to cover the pocket when no knee pad is inserted is present and velcros in place securely. Further down, we have the rear knee Velcro cinches. These allow you to tighten the knee pad to fit your leg. Below that are the wankle pockets. As with all of the G3 clones, this is a similar pocket to the upper thigh, just placed on the lower leg. I have no need for these, and in some versions of the Kermaz G3, these can be removed. The ankles can be adjusted using another Velcro cinch. Jumping back upwards, we have two further stretch panels, one in the scrotal zone, and the other in the lower back, just above the back pockets and booty. The back pockets are hidden and secured by YKK zippers. 
The seat is reinforced with an extra layer of fabric to stop that junk bursting from the trunk. That's the entire list of features the Kermaz G3 trousers has as standard. Nothing out of the ordinary, it's just a standard G3 clone. But rather than being an off-the-shelf mass-produced item like TMC, Emerson or Flash Force Industries for example, this is a bespoke piece lovingly handcrafted to suit your needs. See them as rather than a Topman or Primark suit, they are a beautiful hand-tailored suit from an Italian tailor who nudges your testicles as he takes your measurements. I mean, that's a metaphor for a good suit. Roman doesn't come and measure you up, nor does he nudge your knackers. As a result, the quality of the trousers and the price point reflects this. These come in around the 140 mark, which puts them in a similar price point to Arctis and close to second-hand price point for real cries. Performance-wise, I haven't played airsoft in these yet, but I have worn them as everyday trousers both at work, in the studio, on marshalling airsoft events and at home. They've put up with some serious power lunges with no issues and I have no doubts that when I do LARP in them, they will hold up to the job, no factor. Now the wrap-up. Would I recommend these? If you are a fashionista or you are looking for a pair of G3s in a rare or unobtainable camo pattern, this might be the best way to go about it. As I mentioned, the Kermaz trousers are available in an almost unmeasurable amount of patterns and colorways, with an almost infinite number of custom options. So, if you don't mind the weight, and you definitely need that one weird pattern from Armour 3, then these trousers are for you. If you are a newer player looking for a pair of trousers that are serviceable and in any generic pattern, maybe go down the TMC or Emerson route. In terms of placement on the list, in my eyes, these are top tier trousers and sit up there right next to Cry Precision, Pentagon Wolf and Arctis. When Roman reopens, I'll be in the market for another pair, possibly a full set with U-backs as well. If you have any questions about these pantaloons, drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Before I leave, again, I'd like to say thank you to our Patreon supporter, Henry Field, and remind you that you too can be cool as fuck and support the channel. If this review has been helpful to you, go join the minimum tier for a month and chuck a buck at me as internet celebrity tram driver Nick Meso often says. Don't forget to subscribe. There are plenty of review videos in the works, both as part of this series and in the Airsoft Replica series. Thanks again. I'm Magaz, and remember kids, the air may be soft, but our balls are hard. Also, go ahead, click on this playlist to see the rest of the videos in the Pants Party series.